Hello, today I'm looking at the dark side of power adapters. The purpose for making this video is to expose how many power adapters are on the market today, especially the lower priced ones, are truly not safe devices and are cause for serious concern when it comes to life safety. Today's video will be a bit different as we will investigate why these power adapters aren't up to the task. I have a whole series on power adapters where I test them for performance and do general comparisons of the devices. Over time I have accumulated quite a few of these and some didn't make the grade for their own video. These are popular power adapters on retailer sites and they're also some of the most dangerous products. These adapters have various claims on the packaging and on the samples themselves. Many have no safety listing at all and it's quite obvious that they would never been able to achieve that safety listing in the first place. Get ready for some teardowns. I'm going to jump right in with the power adapter and its performance. Here is the Elkin, ugh, why did they bother making this model? This power adapter is lacking any kind of safety listing and has relatively few markings overall. The performance of this power adapter is not actually the worst when compared to its nearest competition, but it's still very poor. It may not meet energy efficiency requirements, but it doesn't do much more than that. Let's open it up. That's how it's done. Inside, we can see this power adapter is very poorly designed. It has several design features that mean it would never have been able to get that safety listing in the first place. So let's talk about the safety requirements for electronics. This is intended to be an intermediate or introductory overview, so some specifics are left out for time and clarity. There is something called clearance and creepage within electronics. If you've ever had an electric shock from static electricity, then you already know these concepts. Electricity can travel through air at high enough voltages. The space, mostly in air between components, is called clearance. This doesn't have to be on the printed circuit board or PCB. Physical barriers or separators can increase this distance. In general, the larger the clearance between components, the safer the device. Typical clearance values are six millimeters for power supplies. Medical devices may require more, which Kind of seems obvious, right? The next concept is called creepage. This is the path electricity can travel on a circuit board, typically from copper trace to copper trace. Typical creepage values for power supplies are from five to 10 millimeters. An example of effort to increase creepage is to cut slots out of the power supply circuit board or put large gaps between components. Again, the larger the gap, the more safe. A slot cut out in a circuit board may increase the creepage, but not increase the clearance, since the path along the circuit board is longer, but the air distance between the components hasn't changed. There is also the matter of transformer isolation. All power adapters have transformers which convert voltage from a higher level to a lower level to charge your devices. The isolation of the transformer needs to be sufficient to be greater than or equal to the creepage and clearance requirements inside the adapter. Lastly, there's a component that typically connects the mains high voltage wiring to the low voltage wiring called a suppression capacitor. This component leaks a small amount of AC from the low voltage side, but is required to comply with electromagnetic interference requirements. There could be a hundred videos on that alone. The capacitor has to be able to survive large changes or transients in voltage and not fail by short circuiting. There are capacitors specifically rated for this purpose known as Y capacitors, with Y1 being the highest rating. So, to summarize, the safety of power electronics devices depend on four basic design criteria. Maintain proper clearance between components on the circuit board. Properly separate and isolate high voltage traces from low voltage traces, aka creepage. Ensure proper isolation of the transformer. And use a properly rated Y safety capacitor between primary and secondary sides of the circuit. Good designers will work hard to achieve these goals while also taking into consideration the packaging or size requirements by the product designers. These are all part of what safety testing companies like UL will look for when certifying products as safe for use in the home. Of course, not all devices are created equal and sometimes designers will get overruled in the name of cost or time or packaging constraints or even efficiency. For example, more isolation in a transformer can cause lower efficiency and performance. This is where engineering and careful design of these components is important. Taking care to make sure that the user doesn't get a shock is extremely important. Often medical rated power supplies are less efficient because they take isolation to a more extreme level. So back to that first power adapter. We can look for some of the telltale signs of safety or lack of safety in this case. 
First, the components are way too close together. Fail on clearance. If there was a high voltage transient, this can create an arc and leave the power supply in a dangerous condition. The creepage is just as bad. The transformer is tiny and there is no way there is proper isolation between the secondary and primary sides in this small transformer. See my video on unsafe power supplies. The capacitor in this power supply is not a proper rated component. Sounds like trouble. This adapter failed every basic concept. Good thing it has almost 2,000 positive ratings on Amazon. I purchased some of the top selling adapters made from brands I had never heard of. I wanted to see if they were made to the same safety standards of big electronics makers like Anchor and Apple or Belkin. I have found that sometimes the best selling items on Amazon are not exactly what they are advertised as. In either case, I would think customers would want to know before making their purchase. Here on Amazon, we can see some of these devices circled in red on the first page of power adapters. Okay, let's look at another one. This adapter has terrible clearance, creepage, a bad transformer, and a bad safety capacitor. All the things in the wrong place. This is a total fail. Next, another one with all the same issues. Here is one that is extremely cheap. One dollar each. Worst thing I've seen in a long time. Steer clear of this garbage. So here's a chart of each of these power adapters with their performance numbers, of course, but also the clearance that they have between the primary and secondary sides. And as you can see, they're pretty bad, with the exception of one. The one surprise out of the bunch was this Funken, Funken all the way. Actually had a real safety listing and doesn't look like it's built too bad. It barely checks all the boxes, but it does check all the boxes for being an okay product. Is it gonna last a long time? I don't know. Is it efficient? No, but it is more safe. On the topic of power quality scoring, these adapters were all over the place, but in general took most of the bottom spots and in general had very poor performance. I have a summary graph here and I can't recommend any of these. I'll put a few links down in the description of the current top of the stack power adapters. Now that we've reviewed the basic components of design safety, let's take a look at an example from a power adapter with good isolation. This is one of the Anchor power adapters that has a full safety listing and was featured in a previous video. The power adapter solves the clearance and creepage requirements by having a totally separate output circuit board and a physical plastic barrier between the two. That's impressive in this tiny case. The transformer is fairly sizable and it has two wires that pop out from the sides and have an extra layer of insulation over the wires to help shield them from possible contact with the primary mains electricity. Next. We can see that the capacitor between the primary and secondary sides has an appropriate safety listing and rating so is suitable to keep the mains on the main side and the low voltage on the other. Note that a capacitor acts more like a short circuit as the frequency increases so this is effectively connecting the two sides at AC. And there is something called leakage current that does happen. I think this is a topic for another day though. If you want to see a video on that, leave a comment. Another component that connects the main side high voltage to that isolated low voltage side is an optocoupler. We see this example from the Ugreen teardown. This component is a fifth path, but not all topologies use one, and so I'm giving it a quick mention, but generally these are not the weakest link. The creepage under the component is important though. So what should you do about unsafe power adapters? Don't use them. Dispose of them at your local e-waste collection center, and be careful, and remember safety when choosing products. Not all products have safety listings and many bad products don't have listings. Some companies fake the listings, the most dangerous, so buyer certainly has to be aware. The Fonken clearly advertises and is proud of their safety listing, which is one tactic, a welcome one. Most don't make any mention of whether they have it or not, and product photos specifically don't show us the important bits. If only there was a database of all this stuff. As usual, thank you very much for watching and sticking around to the end of the video. If you know of any unsafe power adapters, leave a note in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.